What's up, YouTube? I'm Z, and this channel shows you the world through my lens. Um, <clears throat> so, in case you guys didn't know, I have reacted, like, first listen, first reaction to the full album. It was live, it was a two-hour video, and it was live on my channel for, like, I want to say three hours. I think... I think we hit three hours and then it got taken down. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't get a strike. Uh, I've been very lucky with that this week. I've, I've been trying my luck, but it didn't get a, a strike, but it's on my Patreon for free. So if you would like to see my first reaction, my first listen, definitely check out my Patreon, which is always linked down below. It is completely free. You can join for free and all my videos are free. It's there. Um... Maybe I'll link it if I remember. I've been hearing a lot of stuff about this reverse album theory. So I thought, I already knew I was going to do an individual like further reaction and breakdown of every single song on the album. Because I think it deserves it. Um, but I thought it, what would be a cool idea since the fan base is kind of running with this reverse album theory. I will put out a video on that shortly. Um, that... I would do my individual song reactions backwards. So starting from the end of the album, working up. I thought it was a cool idea. So let's get into this. This is this is a tough one. Daddy? Daddy. Come eat! I'm tired. Just come eat. This see. Oh, man, that part is so hard to hear. Stop. Okay, wake up. Somebody save me. Shout out, Jelly Roll. Me from myself. I've been so long living in hell. Another pill as I start the spiral. Message to my daughters, I don't even deserve the father title. Haley, I'm so sorry, I know I wasn't there for your first guitar recital. Didn't walk you down the aisle. Missed the birth of your first child, your first podcast. Looking down, sweetie, I'm so proud of how you turned out. Sorry that I chose drugs and put them above you. Sorry that I didn't love you enough to give them up how to fuck to. I not love you more than a pill looking up to. The ceiling from this floor on the wheel. Somebody save me. Yeah, um... Again, very tough to listen to the concept of the song. Uh, and, and I can totally see where a lot of the theories are coming from in terms of like this reverse album theory. Um, you know, the chorus, beautiful. Uh, Somebody saved me. And M kind of coming in here and in his verse doing this thing as though he did succumb to the drugs. He wasn't able to overcome that battle. And goes ahead and kind of plays out the moments of, of life. So in this first part, talking specifically about Haley, uh, that, that he would miss because of this. Uh, he mentioned like walking down the aisle. Now, obviously, we know he did walk her down the aisle. So this is a hypothetical situation of like if the drugs, you know, win and I lose and I die, this is me, uh, you know, saying I'm sorry I missed those moments. To the ceiling from this floor on the wheel Somebody save me Me from myself Has been so long Living in hell They say my lifestyle you hear that growl in his voice? Oh. It's bad for my Elena, sorry that you had to hear me fall in the bathroom. Sorry that I missed you gradu. Wait, Nate, I should just congratulate you on being a dad too. Carter and Liam look at you. Little bro, sorry I left you. Sorry that I'll never get to. Hold a hug, my little nephews. Stevie, I'm sorry I missed you. Grow up and I didn't get to be the dad I wanted to be to you. Things I wanted to see you do. This is my song from me to you. Sorry I came up, but I'm just so defeated. God, what the fuck you 
want me to do? So yeah. Um, and again, uh, what I said, you know, hopefully you guys do check out the full album reaction, but my initial reaction to this and immediate thought was like, this song being here and knowing that M is such a champion of sobriety, especially leading with his example and like how well he's done since he's come out of this state. Um, this song was like, I feel so necessary to give people who might be struggling with this issue perspective because I think in the moment... It's very like hard to have foresight. So we're not thinking that if I take this that I'm going to miss the uh, walking down the aisle. I'm not going to meet my nephews. I won't. We don't think that far ahead. We're thinking in this moment that I have this problem. The emotions are overwhelming. I'm mentally losing it. This thing will like help me because it's going to make me not feel those things. So I'm going to take this thing. And, and we're not thinking five, six, ten steps ahead. This song is super awesome because it's showing the perspective of like what will happen if you continue, right? Somebody save me, Fire. me from myself. Has been so. Staring at the video of Haley almost daily of her playing the guitar in hopes maybe that'll give me the power to fight. But the addict in me's a coward. He told me that I can't do it. Had a second chance, blew it. It's like I'm stuck inside an alternate reality, but I know I'll turn it around and be able to walk. That part's interesting too, like I'm stuck in an alternate reality. And the interesting part about that is the place that he would have to go to to write this song technically is an alternate reality to what actually happened um meaning like we know he didn't yes obviously we know the climax and and the the worst moments that he's had because he shared that with us but on the other side of that he survived and he got clean and he's been clean for a while now um but in this situation that line is was has been very interesting for me to hear because I've listened to this song multiple times now but I feel like it was really cool because he would have to be in an alternate reality writing this right give me some coward he told me that I can't do it had a second chance blew it it's like I'm stuck inside an alternate reality but I know I'll turn it around and be able to walk her and Laney one day to the altar as proud as can be right now I'm just weak as I fall further down in this deep as they lower me in my coffin, I feel the tears all falling down on my cheek. I'm a long baby, don't waste your time on me. Now, this last part, I will pull it back so we can listen to it without me talking. But this last part, them switching up the chorus and ending it this way, especially with him ending his verse with him dying, being lowered into his grave. People crying at his funeral. Um, is I'm a lost cause, you know. Uh, very sad ending to this, but again, a very necessary reality check for people who are struggling with um, substance abuse. Now, just in case anyone gets upset that I'm speaking like this, like I don't understand, I myself have had issues with substance abuse in the past. And uh, the allure of not feeling was so strong that I was like, I remember one day driving my friends to school and I was like gone and I was driving and there, there was no foresight to think that I was putting all of my friends lives at risk, uh, mine as well, somebody else on the road. Um, and it's just so I get it. And this is why this song really means a lot to me 
uh, is very powerful. My cheek. I'm a lost cause. Baby, don't waste your time on me. I'm so damaged beyond repair. Life is sad and my hopes and my dreams. I'm a lost cause. Life has shattered my hopes and my dreams. Wow. Um, <clears throat> now, to speak a little bit, just a little bit, on this reverse album theory, okay? Playing it forward, this song being at the end, knowing that M did kill off uh, Slim in the forward version and Guilty Conscious too. Now, I have other... Uh, like, I have more to my theory, which I would love to explain to you guys, but not in this video. Um... Like I said, I'm gonna make a separate video. But to me, because Slim Shady's kind of the the guy who like feeds off of the drugs and all of that stuff, for me, this song was like super symbolic and playing it forward, so this being the last album, I felt like this song was actually from the perspective of Slim Shady, right? Because Slim, once he's been killed off, all of the things that, that M wrote in this track are true for Slim. While Marshall, like the real Marshall, Eminem, got to walk his daughter down the aisle and gets to be there for his nephew and niece and be a father and all the things that he said that he won't get to do, Slim Shady, if he's a product of like the insobriety, he's been gone, right? And he's dead. So he doesn't get to experience all of those things. So that's how I felt listening to it forward. Listening to it backwards, a lot of people saying that this is Marshall, you could take this back to like, I guess, would you take this all the way back to Encore times? I don't know. But, you know, feeling like he's not going to make it, like he's going to lose the battle, right? And uh, basically feeling like he's losing, which is why the song is called Somebody Save Me. So I, I definitely think that the album can work both ways. But I will say this, sometimes when people want something to be true, they make it true in their mind and they'll connect the dots, confirmation bias, all of that stuff. I think unless Slim kind of comes out and says, yeah, you guys got it, like that was awesome. Um, I will still have one foot in, one foot out because while it works, I do think it's not perfect, but it could be. It just depends on interpretation. Okay. Anyways, if you guys are still here, I appreciate you spending your time with me. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.